So you saw that I gave you some documents, uh, put them on your tables. Uh, the PowerPoints, the PowerPoint this morning and the, the second PowerPoint, they will be available also later on if you really want to share this. This does not belong to me. I received this from other people through collaborations. And so uh, you can recuperate uh, my PowerPoint, the PowerPoint that I gave this in the first session this morning and this, this second session. You'll have all the slides with the comments, references. Those who want to look here, I have different books and documents I talked about, the documents I referred to. And over, and over there, there's the tools. OK, you ready to go? So we'll continue to navigate. Among the documents that I gave you that you have in French or in English, the complete message of Francis to the participants at the conference, uh, preparatory conference in December on uh, the vocation uh, pastoral approach and uh, consecrated life. Pa Pope Francis shares a few deep convictions concerning vocations, and you can see, and which formalizes a little bit everything I expressed this morning. Uh, you know that when you hear Pope Francis, it touches us in everything we are doing in France, and we certainly over these last years, especially the National Service for uh, Evangelization and Vocations, the Pope Francis says that uh, the pastoral work for vocations should be part of the church's mission and contribute to a vocational discernment. The vocational work has to be seen as the soul of all evangelization and of the pastoral work of the church. We need to remember the word church comes from a Greek word, ecclesia, gathering, an assembly, the assembly. The church is fundamentally a gathering of called persons in order to call others. So the church, by its vocation, is our, and this is John Paul II said this, John Paul II said, the vocation work has to become the ordinary work and the ordinary pastoral approach for the whole church. Francis simply is uh, un, 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 uh, simply uh, highlighting this. Uh, he's showing that the vocational work finds its humus was, it's a more appropriate humus in the youth uh, work. Pastoral work with young people, pastoral work of the, of the church has to be hand in hand. And this is the basic intuition where we're putting together in a sim single pastoral approach. The evangelization, evangelization and vocation work are together because we show what is happening in the church. But we must not forget that the vocational ministry is broader than the work with the young people. Minister, vocational ministry has to influence the whole work of the church through its uh, through its work with the, it, it, we need to work with the young people, but it must uh, the, the vocational discernment was or vocational ministry must uh, touch the whole church. We haven't finished changing our mentalities. This is what I try to highlight uh, this morning: the need for change. Uh, we need to see that we have to have to go from a pastoral work, a pastoral care of recruitment, vocations. That's how that's how vocations were seen as recruiting recruiting novices, recruiting seminarians. And now we need now we need to look at as a pastoral care of discernment and accompaniment. Accompaniment. So so we need to go from a pastoral care of ex expectations uh, where the person uh, who is responsible for vacations waits in his office for people who aren't coming there and also the other now to go on to a, the uh, ch a church out in the world. In what Pope Francis said, the three words of vocations are going out, seeing, seeing young people, meeting young people, and calling. Going out, seeing, and calling. So the pastoral ministry is not done here in this uh, room nor in an office. It's going outside in the peripheries where the young people are to develop a, an approach of call, of proposal, of questioning, and to 
uh, proclaim the uh, the, past, the pastoral ministry of vocation, and that's the most important thing is to show that life is vocation. A life is a vocation, and so that the major challenge of the vocational ministry and everything we can do afterwards, uh, in terms of practical uh, experience that I'm going to develop, is to vocation vocationalize the whole church. That's the major challenge. Vocationalize the church, and so in other words, we need to be constantly a church that is discerning the major the, the idea here is to help us to be in a constant discernment process I'm going to propose uh, thinking of the pastor uh, vocational ministry to see here the culture of vocations if you wish as a way of seeing things a way of looking at the world that we're looking at the church a way of seeing the people uh, it was what we call in French a new hermeneutics of life. In other words, an interpretation of life. Not life. Life is not something that is given to us from on top in in, in a in a fixed in a fixed way. We need to think of vocation in a dynamic approach. When I was a young person, I thought that the day where I'd be I'd enter into the community of my sisters of Xavier's, finally I could relax. Discernment's over with. That was it. No, 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 no. That it's during the whole life we're going to take time to discern, to find out what kind of savior I'm going to be, what kind of mission I'll have, what kind of work I'll be doing. My vocation is till I die. I'll be in vocation till I die. And it's during our whole life, even the senior citizens in the retreat centers, we need to have them discover what is the, still their vocation, because a lot of them feel useless. No, I'm a missionary. I, I wait till I, my death even in my retreat center. So for this retirement center, and what helps me in the, today's context to talk about uh, all of this is the image of art. To think of our vocational ministry. I'm, we're gonna invite you to look at the very well known of the Caravaggio in Saint Louis de Francais in Rome, uh, Church of Rome, the Call of Matthew. You might know of the Call of Matthew, Caravaggio. This particular work uh, invites us to see that the call, the vocation, is to look at the person with God's eyes, with the eyes of God, who enters in a dialogue with humanity. Here is Christ. Christ is here. Christ is looking at Matthew, the sinner, who is closed in his sin. Uh, he's in the darkness here, actually. And you can see the light, the role of the light. The light comes, th th passes through pierced persons. Those who know, who went to Rome, you might know that in the Sixteen Chapel, there's the hand of God that touches the hand of human of a, of Adam. In this chart, in this uh, picture, look at the the hand of Christ picks up the Chapel Sixteen motif, motif. But there's a difference. The hand of Christ is not presented as God's hand; it's presented as the hand of Adam, which means that the call that comes from God is God's, the call comes from God, but it, it expresses itself, transmits itself through our human hands. So God doesn't have any other hands than ours, does have no other mouth than ours, have no, has no other eyes than ours to see the world, to incarnate and transmit his call. And so in this picture you see here, that to be called, as Christ is calling, it's a call that highlights, that, that, that has people come out of the darkness, has them come out of sin, and enter into the light. I'm going to, uh, the hand, this hand of Christ, which is fundamentally the hand of the person who accompanies. The attitude of the director of vocations or the person who is responsible for formation is one of in, is one of a company, but, uh, it's, it's, it's a look uh, of discernment. The hand calls, accompanies, translates a perspective of discernment, which is God's way of looking, which is not, which, which, which does not want to control God's grace, 
but simply wants to look and highlight its uh, creativity, its a resurrectional view, and a salvation view. The, the main words for pastoral ministry today is discernment and accompaniment. So, Gaudete and Exultate, if Father Rosica quoted this yesterday, Pope Francis says, the attitude, the aptitude for discernment becomes really necessary now because today we're caught in all kinds of choices and possibilities. We're wrapped up in many options and the young have all kinds of pathways in front of them. So there's a lot of asks, sorry, there's a lot of requests and so people need guides and accompaniers. And for me, this picture I'm showing you now is Moses crossing the Red Sea. It's in the Redemptorist Mater Chapel in, uh, in the Vatican, the Mosaic. Look at Moses here, who's crossing the Red Sea. The people, he's crossing the people out of Egypt. Look at the two hands of Moses. Of Moses. What is the first hand? What is it doing? It's extended, shows the pathway of life, the road to the Holy Land, to the Promised Land, to greater life, the liberation of resurrection, ultimately. You can see here Moses, who's also house of the new Christ. And the second hand in the back, up on the right-hand side, let's see what the right hand is doing. The second hand in the crossing is naming the waves, showing the waves, the waves of death. In the Bible, the sea is often seen as the dark forces. The discernment process and the accompaniment process means that we're going to be like Moses, accompanying, show the pathway to life because our fundamental vocation is to always uh, lead towards more life, more love, more peace. And the, on the other hand, on the right-hand side, is we have to name also, or de de determine, and, and set aside. But often, we, have, we see the both hands together. So the key, or the greatest need we have today in the vocational ministry, in France anyway, is to train good accompaniers. Train good accompaniers. This is a very, very, is a strong request to be uh, competent there, which leads ultimately to God. So the formation of the accompaniers is to form people to discernment, help young people on their pathway. And we are, like Moses and the Hebrew people, we're in a crossing uh, of a ch world cha in change of the sea that is there. So we have to discern locally, and we can't do everything in the, in the vocational ministry. Well, we have to see what are the calls and to translate them into uh, work and the proposals. I'd like to now show you certain tools the concrete tools on, I give you a few elements on the situation in France. Sometimes some of the people see this uh, very, some people see uh, that everything's dying in, in France. No, there's a lot of things that are, are, are seeing the light with a lot of initiatives. And what we hear often is that a lot of young people are asking themselves questions around their vocation, including the vocation of priesthood or religious life based on the experience they have of a personal encounter with, they have had with Christ. If that encounter doesn't happen, we heard it yesterday, thank you Rochelle for what she shared, uh, based on the uh, a certain place of commitment, it's not from one day to the next we're going to enter in, into religious life or a seminar, seminary. We, we have to commit ourselves progressively in the culture of uh, what is provisional. So since we're working on a pedagogy of progressive uh, things uh, will progressively enter into uh, uh, a new world. We need to see how we can promote what we call uh, volunteerism. Uh, go off as a, as a volunteer in a country in Africa or being a volunteer uh, in civil service in France. If you want to work for vocations, we propose was always some kind of uh, commitment uh, as a volunteer, uh, doing a charity work uh, with the poor. That's the best place to generate uh, a call. So I'm not, I'm not going to show you. We did a, uh, a question on the 
uh, youth days after Krakow. There was 35,000 young French people. Among those 35,000 that came from all the dioceses and communities, we asked them, for those who are going to the youth, youth days, have you ever thought of becoming priests or religious? Answer, seriously, 19%. So 30 vaguely. So that's 40% of those who went to the youth days who thought about becoming priests or religious. After that, there's a question that, question that brings us up. We, there's a gap between boys and girls. Maybe God calls more girls than boys. More boys than girls, I should say. But maybe. Maybe. Do we talk about voca possible vocations to, with girls that we do as we do for the boys? Anyway, I'll, let's, I'll leave you with that answer. But this, well, all we know is that on those who think about vocation, who have, who, uh, who have, they have sometimes been to retreats or youth groups. So when, when we talk about vocation beforehand, they've already had experiences of uh, faith. They've had certain commitments of faith. So what we see is that God continues to call. The crisis of vocation is not a, a crisis of call. Basically, it's a crisis of response. And because God calls constantly in a new way through new pathways that are maybe longer, more complex. But the question is now, how can we adapt our, uh, what we have to offer? That, for me, is the greatest challenge of the pastoral ministry, or the vocational ministry. How can we respond and accompany people in this process of discernment for their vocation? using the language and the culture of today. I mean, that's the major challenge today. First of all, having as having as a map, very clear map, that we have to propose a personal encounter with Jesus. This is what allows us to bring together all the people who are working in the pastoral ministry and the vocational ministry. But we can't evangelize the young people without involving them. This is what Paul Francis talks about protagonism. We can't invent pastoral or vocational ministry without the young people. They're the ones who help us. In, and in my groups, I always have three or four young people. That's they're, they're the ones I work with to bring about some any kind of a concrete proposal. But it presupposes, as Father Rosica says, that everybody wants to have young people. But to what extent am I ready to change my way of being, my way of, of uh, living, to, to be challenged by what the young people are asking me? To do this, you have a third document that you can look at on your table. I wrote, I gave it to you. You have to think of a vocation ministry in a progressive way. Uh, who hasn't, person who hasn't met Christ yet, who doesn't know that life is vocation, can't immediately jump in and think about the missionary. So we have to develop pedagogies that, on a progressive way, what we call the vocational awareness or awakening each person is called to life the church is a community of called persons so this is the vocational awareness and awakening then the come and sees to help those who are asking questions about the sense the meaning of their lives and, and a commitment and then we have to propose something and for those who want to follow Christ more closely and who ask questions about coming and following me, help them to discern through an accompaniment. So we need to think in a, a vocation ministry with different approaches uh, in, 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 as, in a progressive way. The greatest issue to us today is to demystify, clarify, and communicate and suggest a different vocation. So, concretely, we have to allow each young person to hear the Christ call, opening up all the poss all po kinds of possibilities. Many young people don't even think or imagine that the life of a priest or a sister is all, uh, even a marriage, because t even today it's hard to live out a marriage as a vocation uh, over time. So the young people say, take a care to present marriage as much as you take care to present the priesthood and his sisterhood. I mean, it's, it's not self-evident. And the other three are self-evident. We can't, we need, mo the young people need models that they can project themselves in. They need references. So at the, in, at the, so the points that we insisted on 
uh, that, and I'll show you tales about this, is that we, we can do whatever we want, but God is calling. He's the master of the harvest. So our whole uh, vocational ministry has to be uh, rooted in the prayer for vocations. That's the foundation. We have to pray for vocations, and we have to do a lot of things on that side, and we will see what we can do. So each year, for the World Day of Vocation Prayer, we have a, we build up a tool, a kit, with a with with uh, things for liturgy, for uh, games, even proposals. We send this out in the dioceses and parishes and communities. You have examples here, over and there. We have prayer for the uh, to pr uh, vocation prayer a booklet of, of prayer and things, all kinds of things. This is the annual production. This can be used also during the whole year. Specific tools that we have with the th a different theme each year. I brought you a present. You can all take the, pr the prayer image for the Synod for vocations this year. The Pope Francis, Pope Francis wrote this with the beloved disciple as given there. It's in French, but there's one for each one. You can take it over, get it over there. We developed also in France, uh, in a lot of dioceses, what we call the invisible monastery. This is uh, prayer chains, uh, chains of prayer between people that commit themselves to pray for vocations every month, uh, every week, whatever. There's like a link, there's a little magazine uh, and a site. So the invisible monastery is to mobilize all Christians to pray for vocations. We have this in many dioceses, and for example, all the dioceses today, when there is an ordination, the evening before, they have a major prayer vigil for vocations. So there are all kinds of things we can do, adorations for vocations, there's all kinds of initiatives we can take in this respect. The second element, the key element, after prayer for vocation, I said this morning, is what it might appear the most basic, is to develop a culture of collaboration. We can't do anything alone anymore. Even the best director, a vocation director, uh, in his or her diocese, if this person is working alone, they won't be able to do anything. You need to work with the team, and the vocation ministry and everything that we've talked about has to be done in collaboration, in network, to bring together the dioceses, the movements, the communities, and all of this. Nothing works if you say, well, I direct your vocations, I'm going to organize this. No. Everything has to go, uh, the links, the relationships, the networks, go ahead and to see the communities, see the movements. I mean, if we w w sit down and wait for people to come to the door, it won't happen. Par very important partnerships also with the seminaries and the uh, high schools, because they're also important uh, people the witness of young people, so we have to work and be in relationship with the seminaries and the uh, high schools or early college time. Uh, also, we need to be really in relationship with those who are responsible. We created in France networks of young religious. So uh, here in Quebec, I think they're called the Benjamin. Uh, it's starting so that they be they, they, they intervene and work with us in the vocational ministry. And the best way, when I came to the con Bishop's Conference, there was one day the formation of those who, the Dawson formators of vocations, and at another time they had the formation of those who were responsible for vocations in communities. It wasn't together. And since then we said we have to bring the priests and the religious together. So this creates links. We learn to get to know each other. We have one single formation on a, on a, on a ad hoc basis and on a permanent basis and we work with the movements and the communities in this and our service which the, which is part of the bishops conference has developed a partnership a very strong partnership with the conference of religious from France which brings together all the major spheres as sisters and my mom nation I represent also in a certain way the conference of religious in this service uh, the uh, vocation ministry there's really a strong institutional partnership there. And so we have developed a lot of tools also in collaboration with the Religious Conference of France, and I'm going to show one of them to you, particularly a video that we did together. 
another kind of collaboration that we developed and insisted on this collaboration with places which we call vocational places. In France, we have a, we're lucky, we have Tézé, the community of Tézé. I know there's a brother who was in Toronto not long ago. A lot of young French people come to Tézé. They they, Tézé plays a very important role today in the vocational ministry in France. So we get to know them. I go to Tézé. I call two brothers from Tézé to be part of our national team. Uh, I We participate to the European meetings. Because Tézé is an important place for the young people and for vocations. And also with Lourdes, there is a youth service in Lourdes, and we work in collaboration with them also at, this, at the shrine. Our national service, since the very beginning, has created what we call a vocational pavilion in Lourdes. There's a home, a house, a permanent place, and we sent teams there when the young people come uh, as pilgrims in Lourdes, we invite them to go to the vocation pavilion and we have a whole bunch of animation that's done, witness, games, to talk about vocation. So we're present there in these the, the shrines in different places of pilgrimage because Lourdes, with the experience of the sick people, uh, is a, voc a very important vocation center. The last kind of collaboration that we've developed over the last three years, we know in France, a lot of... Uh, we call uh, the years for God. It means that young people take a year, they stop to their studies and or their work. They go live in a community to be trained, formed, to offer some kind of service. This year for God is are made either by the dioceses, sometimes the dioceses created these years for God, or this is done by communities. Presently, we have created a network with all those who are responsible uh, for these years for God that they meet and then we promote these years for God because these are years that help the young people to uh, progress. Another kind of good practice, I, I know you're already probably doing some of this, to help the vision and the implementation, there has to be a good analysis of the situation. And the surveys, sociological surveys, the studies, the research can help in this, try to name things to objective, to, to clarify them. You might say something uh, and others don't listen to you, but if there's a, if there's a survey, that really helps. So uh, to be objective and to reflect on a situation. So we were very inspired in France by all the work done in the States uh, by the maybe you know the CARA uh, surveys, they show a certain number of good practices of good w ways of, prece of proceeding in the seminaries or religious life. And we developed a French survey with the, the religious conference in France adapted to the American conference of religious, um, so which led us and showed us that in spite of everything we say in the French context, religious life has, has a positive image in, by people in the country. And that, but it's perceived as something that is outside of society. So we have to be aware of that. It's, it's, it'll help us in our way of witnessing, of communicating, because we're seen as being outside of things. A lot of French people see religious as coming from coming from Mars. Mars, that they're not on the earth. So we, how would how people can discover uh, who what religious really are is something else. They also have. We we saw that for many of our of our people, they see the life of a sister or a priest as being something as if they were in a prison. And when you meet young people, often they ask you as a sister, oh, are you allowed to leave? Can you get out? Can you go on the holidays? Can you go into the restaurant? Can you travel? Uh, these are all questions young people ask. So today, the freedom, whole question of freedom, freedom is the power value of this, our new generation. So how we need to show them that our life is not a prison. We never were as free as we are now uh, as disciples of Christ in our vocation. So you see, all, this, all these surveys help us to understand and develop the proper approach. And the, we did a, relation, a survey of, of, among young religious to see what helped them 
to understand their discernment and their decision in order to come to religious life. It shows us the good practices. The most important thing, and I said, is the relationship and a new experience in a, com in a community and accompaniment is the, the most important thing. Another focus on practices that need to be developed, an important presence needs to be made uh, during the major events where young people are, church events, particularly the youth days, but also any other kind of gathering, diocesan gathering of young people, meeting of students. Uh, so in all these encounters where there are spiritual uh, inv invitations for the young people, we need to be present with the question of vocations. So this can, uh, you, we can have stands uh, as, as for the youth group, for the youth uh, year, youth meetings, there's a whole preparation uh, for the youth groups. You have communities that present, come and see, it's, we're, par we're paradise. No, we decided with the uh, youth days in Madrid as well as England to do a mixed, to show all the vocations with a team of diocesan priests, a consecrated life, and we had a bishop last time. So this touches the young people to see that we're not there to have them enter into our community, but to, we want to talk about their vocation, and we invited them, we, we told them we'd pray for their vocation. There were two stands like that in France, in England, in, in Krakow, a lot of young people came to us because a lot of people don't want to be grabbed and stuck to a community because they're afraid of losing their freedom and, it, and not being able to discern freely. So anything we can do together, together today, we have to do it and develop. And in the meetings, there's stands, there's uh, seminars on vocations, it's in the liturgy, so there's all kinds of ways of dealing with this. Now I'd like to go on to the part entitled Tools and Resources. The first thing is that we need to reflect uh, and formalize proposals. So we need to publish a whole bunch of things. I've shown examples of books and, and documents on the pastoral ministry, our vocational ministry, youth ministry. We just had the results of the national consultation for the synod, which says a lot about the situation in France. Uh, so those documents are there and they're published. The second thing after publications, you know, young people, what they love is fun, games, anything that's really uh, pleasant. The Catholic movements that are increasing in France, it's the Catholic Scouts. We have three Scout movements that's working really well, it's developing well. Why? Because it's a, they do things and they play games. It's not just uh, art or conferences and then you're, you hear somebody who talks. And, but no, people want to talk. I didn't do this, but I could have proposed in all our formations today, we always have an interactive part moment and we have tools that you can see. Uh, we, can, we, can, we have inline quiz and you, you respond with your smartphone. We ask questions about vocations. Uh, you can build uh, any kind of questionnaire you want and we have another tool that we use a lot, uh, Activox. We ask the groups who has thought about being priests or religious. So they vote, but it's anonymous. And so they discover that they're not alone to have thought about that. In Lourdes, for example, when we receive the young people at the pavilion there, we ask the question, there's about 25% and 35% of the young people who say, yeah, we've thought about vocation. And that allows, this is a facilitation tool to allow for dialogue and allow people to share about this. Here, we also have a lot of other tools, promotional materials, expos. We've talked about the priest, consecrated life. This could be in the parishes, in the chaplaincies, in the university campuses, in the shrines, so stands. Uh, all kinds of examples of uh, panels. And we work with communication people, professional communication people, to do things with the codes of the young people. Because if you do things 
using the codes of 40 years ago, for the young people, it's out of date. It's dépassé. It's just, they won't look at it. There's a whole question of enculturation here. And specifically, we worked on a way of presenting what is the adventure of religious life. An other kind of adventure, we, we call it a different adventure, a, a human and spiritual adventure, the adventure of the gift of self, of service, the adventure of the community. We try to find a simple language which speaks as the young people speak and to talk about the task of minister uh, for you know for dance and priests. But the most difficult thing today in France is that many people don't even have an image of what a, of what uh, what a priest is. The dance, the dance and priest identity is changing constantly. So there's a need to help young people to have a clear picture or a clear rear picture of what this vocation is. And so we need to work on this. An example is to show that the priest is the man of God, the man of the of God's otherness here, the man of communion, a man consecrated to his people or given over to his people. And the same thing hasn't been done yet. We need to work with the family uh, ministry to see how we present the vocation to marriage. Last point in our practices, in our best practices, you know we're in a society of communications, of information, of social media. If you don't communicate, you don't exist. So communication has become now a key element of how to evangelize the young people and how to do uh, vocational ministry. It's a question of enculturation. So we need to learn now how to communicate using the language of all these media. So we have, a, we've developed. It's not spontaneous for people to go and talk on TV or to use social media. There's a lot of sensitization work that has to be done previously. Uh, each year we have pre press releases or press conferences. We have links with reporters who ask why are we talking about religious life, or why people enter into religious life, what is a priest, and we develop partnerships, very strong partnerships with all the Catholic media so that the question of vocation always be on the burner. We have articles, conferences, etc. Especially need to form priests, seminarians, religious, married people, and lay people to witness their vocation in the media. That is something we can learn. Uh, I've been taught this. It's called media training. And our service organizes each year a media training for the vocations. Four days where we learn how to talk on TV, on, uh, on radio, or, or whatever. A very important presence on the social networks. We have tw Twitter, Twitter uh, Facebook, Instagram. We created visual visuals to present all the religious families. We have the Dominicans, but we have this for every uh, community, uh, every, every congregation, uh, Franciscans and whatever. So on Twitter, we talk visually. You have to have infographs and talk about our vocation visually. And I'd like to show you a concrete example of a video now that we did at the end of the year of consec consecrated life with the uh, brothers and sisters of France to talk to the young people of what is the call and what is the vocation. And we did a USB key over there with all the little videos on vocations and uh, we give this out, give out the USB keys that there's your tools and you can get it on YouTube also. Here's one of the videos so you can see a little bit what it's all about. There are thousands of apps that allow us to communicate using always diverse technologies. A multitude of interface using the same principle, call or being called. And each call offers the same sensations. The way silence, the curiosity of knowing who is calling us and why they're calling us. The first call we've received was that from our parents. A call to live, to grow, 
to be uh, have a name. The, this character they characterize us. They make us unique through our families and friends and for always, forever. It's our name that puts us in a list, a list, a team to be called, to see our name appear. These are how we become a person. And word gives meaning to creation, names it, God calls. Through God's call, gives meaning to our existence. And when God calls us, God gives meaning to us, meaning in the heart of creation. Only God's call can transform us. Even where we will change name as Abraham, who could become Abraham, who becomes Abraham, or Simon, who becomes Peter, Martin, who becomes Brother John, Celine, who becomes Sister Isabel, Jorge Mario, who becomes Pope Francis. Like me, I become Frère Novel. Only God can call us in you, indicating a difference between I, my name is, and I am called such a name. We are all called to walk like Abraham, like Peter, to hear this call, to be able to distinguish it uh, in constantly, to listen, to withdraw, to hear it finally, to listen to God's word, to discern and to trustingly becoming part of God's plan. Love, be there. When the call comes from God, we have to use our imagination to answer in a thousand ways. God has a call for each person. And our answer is, needs to be the same as Christ Jesus. Consider an answering. So you can see we have to talk through images, images that relate to people using an imagery and a pedagogy of the call to vocation and with the video that We've used a lot with young people. We had a uh, whole tool uh, kit to generate questions, and and I, it works really well with, with uh, for us. Those who are interested can also go and see all our the internet sites around vocation, Twitter, Facebook, etc. So you can see all these uh, places, sites. Another approach is quite interesting. For many years now, there's a lot of films that talk about vocation. And so we use different films that have been produced. Each time there's a film that comes up and touches religious life or the life of a priest, we write up articles, we go and see them, propose discussion, we accompany young people with this. These are our locations. Here you have the Passion of Augustine. We have done all kinds of things. How major films, uh, uh, theater films are occasions even, to talk about vocations, to talk about a call. And you have this for religious life, but you also have recently by talk, uh, film, uh, films, we, we follow this, we follow these films and we do whatever we can here. Because many young people go to, to films, I mean, this is part of their culture. We also have promoted a theater piece of uh, uh, drama from uh, um, religious life is called Fertile Desert. It's a story of a young woman who on the day she presented her thesis tells her father she's going to enter into apostolic religious life. And there's a whole dialogue between the father who's married uh, and the daughter. It's a very beautiful 
uh, the, the moment of theater which talks about vocation and it creates can create an exchange or a debate particularly with the parents because today the greatest blo uh, obstacle to vocation is often the parents parents don't who don't read dream that their daughters or sons become priests or their religious nuns so we have an association which is called the association of parents of religious uh, priests we talk with them they have they wrote a book so you have to do a lot of work with the families and the parents and this uh, theater is, is, is an example. I'd like to conclude here to tell you that even if these are a lot of things that I'm showing you, it's we're still far, far from, uh, we mustn't believe that France is doing everything wonderfully, that we're the model. No, we still have a lot of the, uh, things in, under construction. And here I simply try to share a lot of things with you, but you can certainly do much more than we have done. In the, when, we, when we did the consultation for the Synod of 2018 and the responses we got from the dioceses and movements, we had a lot of responses in France. Many people have chosen not to respond to the questions on vocations. So you see, that's an indication already. So we see that there's still a lot of places in our diocese and parishes where we never talk about vocation. There's no vocational awakening or whatever. It is. So the local implementation is not over with. The family context in France, we have a very strong pressure on success in studies and work. We have a school system that insists a lot and puts a lot of pressure. The parents really concentrate a lot on the studies. So if there are a lot of there's a lot of creativity anyway don't think of france as the example it's not true but we do try modestly with uh, to do have things progress i'd like to ask you a question that comes back very often come back uh, and that we hear over many years now the question of uh, vocation is more complicated for a young woman i mean this, this shows up in many ways and it's also today a question not only for women but for priests what do you do to allow women's vocation to to appear uh, this is more complicated than just accompaniment uh, particularly among men right now we're trying to create new ideas we have uh, the ratios you know we have to have uh, the, the new uh, uh, curriculum advise us to go through a special school before going into the seminary. So we're wondering we shouldn't have a kind of what they call propedeutic in, in France. We'd have it, it's, a, it's a pre uh, a year before, uh, some, but, but a, a community can't do it alone. The, together, many of us, uh, many with the su support of the diocese of national services have to be helped out. So many people feel that the, what boys have in terms of pre seminary years uh, with adaptation could be done for women. And we also see that today many women, girls who have a call to consecrate life don't find in the present forms of religious life, the ways they see a religious life, they don't find any answers to their quest. So some bishop try to accompany them with new forms. So anyway, this is all under, under uh, quest, under new research. And you see in the final document of the precedent, when we talk about the place of young people today in the church, the question of young women is appears quickly. And I gather that the next synod after in Amazonia will be on women. There are signs of that already. Uh, so we'll talk about it maybe in a few years. So you see here, young people, and it came back very strong that the church helps them to better understand the role of women, of young women today, to how to accompany them. So, with the request of an inclusive church, in that everybody has their place, women, men, lay, consecrated, uh, in a uh, context of res mutual responsibility. Last point. The greatest work for the vocation ministry is, is not with the young people. It's easy to work with the young people sometimes. The greatest work we need to do is with the leaders, those who are responsible for formation within the communities, the bishops, because it's not the question of bringing young people to the doors of religious life or the seminary. It's what happens afterwards. And I think that the Holy Spirit is still calling us today in new ways. So the greatest challenge is how we are, will change 
and in our discernment. In a context that's very sensitive to young people, because in France, there's not a common vision on what vocations. There's a lack of priests, there's too many seminaries, many seminaries have very few uh, seminarians, it's very complicated. Well, we also have a major problem, I don't know if you have it here in Canada, we have it in many communities, there's uh, power grabs, and I suspect that if we don't do all this work of struggling against abuses as we did in sexual matters, the uh, vocations hear about this power grabs and within, even their, within religious life. And I think that the Synod is really a beautiful gift for us to help us in this approach. I think the Holy Spirit calls us to continue using creativity, innovation, being very pragmatic. We shouldn't be ideologists. We have to seek, experiment, um, and evaluate, but doing this with, with uh, daring, uh, audacity, with trust in a, dynam in a process of community. Not only the young people have to get off of their uh, sofas, we are all invited to leave our sofas, sofas because the young people are awaiting us. Thank you for having listened to me.